Okay, folks, uh, pay attention to this. We know CPMs and RADs, okay? Uh, Sechi's keeping me out of there. We know that when I found out, figured out, and show, I mean, when I basically told you guys how to read the data on CPM and RADs on the, the uh, Environmental Protection Agency, uh, they took the volume out of the box. So now we he had this fine on the last video, and basically you can see that this should be Earth here. You've got this current date and time there. Now, this is as good as I get. I had to go to a thousand percent to get this shot because when I started videotaping this morning, uh, what was going on in Hawaii? Now, this could be just actually uh, hot, steamy water coming out of the volcano down there in Hawaii. It sure looks like lightning, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure it's hot, steamy water. But we got the witches of East showing up there. And basically, there's other shots. Of around and you can also see it there and no it's not lava flopping up in the air okay because I have other shots around Hawaii that would go to these webcams and they usually put the most interesting shots up there so you can see what's going on and i.e. our terra hydrants that we see down in Antarctica are showing up in the sky and have been for quite a while because of this year so who knows how many people they put in the mental institute now like some women or even men can be uh, they want, I wouldn't call them men, but the idea that they could be uh, brainwashed when they see stuff like this or whatever and just go goofy because they're real religious or something. The devil's coming, God's coming, but it looks like witches of Eastwood. And we've seen it on the webcams when we see the, the action, and then basically I started at 8 o'clock this morning on their clock, okay? Hawaii Standard Time, there was this here. So if you can get archival of the Hawaii webcams from Joint Astronomy Center and United Kingdom Infrared Telescope, people. Uh, I think when you click on it, you're just going to go to web. That's why I don't waste my time going to these webs cameras, because usually you go there, it's nothing what you want to look at and stuff like that. And I'll, If I do find something, then I'll let you know, but I have to waste time looking at them. Because usually you get recent shots, like you can see the times and stuff here, and basically the dark light, and there's people up there looking at it and checking it out, okay? The dark light is getting propagated, okay? And this is where they stole my audio. You can see, you can see constellations or anything in the other day up there. Okay, so we'll keep cruising through these webcams, and basically these guys showed that, and we know these guys. Okay, so you got that from the first. So you probably want to go out and look at their stuff, and you can see it in this shot here. Okay, but I'm not sure what date that could be. They could just be leaving that there for a shot, but it could be the recent shots. Now there was a shot around here, and I'll be able to pull up and go to the uh, go to my photographs and show you the idea that at the 1600 hour in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, the sun, I'm pretty damn sure. Now, I can't get that. I know this is a sun shield that they put over top of the veil that they have on top of these cameras up high. But I think this is honestly the same propagation, folks. And also the same propagation reflecting, or at least in the camera lens, or being shown to be hitting the back of the. So, and look at all the pepper down in there. I mean, that stuff's down there. You can even see by just looking at this, okay, that's not a dirty lens. That stuff is actually showing up there, okay? So this stuff is out in space, but how far is what we're looking at and trying to figure out, okay? And also here, but that one's got a shade also. And that, this next shot is the one that basically I got saved my photos, basically. But the sun, or let me go real fast to, um, and also there's a constellation being seen over here, too, and I don't know if I get a date. I think this is today. So you can see this is, even in the daylight, stuff showing up. Okay, so we're getting we're getting stars getting very illuminated during the daylight hours, folks. Okay, it's only 1,500 hours. Okay, and we're seeing this stuff. Okay, this is awesome and beautiful. So with these panoramic shots here at the SGS, you can see the moisture does show up on possibly some of these shots, but then again. It may not be moisture, but at the altitude it could be moisture. But these objects, these dark specks, not that damn positive that the real dark specks, because we have seen the um, which is an Eastwick before in that. And I actually have a picture of showing uh, to the left being the witches of Eastwick pretty much and not moisture on the lens. And there gives a good chance that we might investigate and find out that this is not moisture either, possibly. I'm not sure. As the camera is popping in and out, it can be a different shot. But no matter what, we are seeing that object. Okay? That
that signature in a webcam shot. Okay. And so I'm not leaving out anything. Here's the the bottom of the crater. Okay. So this stuff was taken in daylight time. Okay, because they put all these shots together and meld them together. Okay. So those are deeper down in the crater, I think, or something like that, or higher up. So, because it's basically this whole thing is a shot. I could mock it down to 50, and they could give you there's a shot of them. Basically, you could put this together, and that's the volcano. Okay. So. So that light propagation is still there and changing at, uh, I believe this was, I don't know, I had a time on this thing earlier. There you go. There's your time. The fish shot was taken. Okay. And what's very interesting is check that out. That's light propagation, folks. So it's beginning to match up a lot of them. Everybody on Dutch sense that we know about the idea of this light hitting uh, Earth and hitting Japan over there and possibly causing those volcanoes and ferrohydrants hitting the uh, radioactive uh, nuclear and probably more than, more than likely propagating this stuff. So it's really coming together. And here's another one I think that I don't know if it's a time change or something like that, but check that out. That's light, folks. Okay? 1700 hour, too. So, and we know it's up higher than what we've got sun setting. Okay? So it's up higher coming down from what we got sun setting. Okay? Even if the sun is setting at 1732, which I really doubt it, uh, maybe it is. But then that makes my even more clear that this is coming from down. Not, I mean, from coming from up high, as you can see these light propagations coming in from up high. Okay, so let's get up in space. Everyone needs to know that when you want to refresh this, basically remember, if you look at this, you'll see the purple lines, and basically it'll give you the mesh when you're at Fireball. And let's go ahead. You, you can see there that basically that's the moon tonight. And we also have this. And a lot of stuff getting propagated in the night sky, okay? That's not clouds there, folks, okay? That's our thing that basically more than likely in this pointer, I believe, is what they've been watching. There's actually an object out there in space, and they're keeping an eye on it during the daytime because that marker lets them know and see right where they should be keeping an eye on that thing all the time, see if it moves or not, okay? As you see, that that point pretty much ends up right there, okay? So that's not the moon doing that, okay? It just makes sense too. When you see all this propagation off the moon, and I'll give you other shots of the moon, okay, in a different location, and then you get this, and this is part of that, what we see there, and then watch the clocks on all this stuff, and there's another shot of the moon tonight, and let me give you uh, one more there, and there, you get a nice word, there's a little bit of a haze and a cloud overhang, and then that there is basically what's going on in New Mexico sky. So it's very interesting in New Mexico sky, what is all that bright light coming up, okay? So West Coast people were starting to talk about it, and then we've seen a lot of stuff going on. So there is your mesh, okay? And also the constellations, right, they're current, okay? But remember that the, the axis tilt, and I'll even be more, as you just seen this shot here, the axis tilt, folks, you see what basically North America and stuff like that, we're tilting exactly down like that, okay? I.e. here's more on your mesh and your axis tilt. And yes, folks, the moon and the sun. The sun's always going to go in this line like this, and it's always going to be on our equator, folks. So that's how much we've tilted. And making people wake up to the idea that how much we've tilted, when you're looking at Asgard, okay, we showed you on the mesh on here, too. You can see the mesh, okay, north, okay? That's how much we've tilted, folks. Okay, now, yes, that's just looking up at, up at the sky in the night, right? That's how much. That's the moon there, okay? That's the moon on every one of these shots, right? That's the moon there on that shot, okay? And then we look at the map, and there's where the moon's at, okay? So that's how much we have tilted North America, okay? Because there's the North Pole right there over what is considered to be, I don't know if that constellation star is considered our North Star, but there is a North Star. And the North Star does change. So look up the history of North Stars. Over time, over hundreds of thousands of years, it will change. Okay? So that was current there at 1242. Once again, just remember that they...
Okay, this is how small they're putting the shots right now. Since we found that satellite, that's how small they're making the shots. So you got to zoom in, and then when you zoom in too much, you just go to dots. Okay, which basically they get, but they get to transfix it and give it to where we normally get the movies and stuff where we can see stuff really clear. So I can't zoom in on that. If I zoom in on that, uh, just that. Okay, I'll just get all those dots. Okay, so that's how tiny. When I go all the way out, that's how small they're giving us the shots right now. At least giving me anyway. They don't want me to talk to you and show you stuff. So, i.e., I blow this up a thousand percent to be able to see that, okay? Because they're keeping me out of Setsu right now. So, there is a very interesting object right there, and it has a magneticism, okay? And that is the Earth. And that is where the sun and the solar flares are coming from back over here in the solar weather. And that is a Jupiter, okay? But remember, roll this up like a piece of paper, folks, okay? We're closer to, because we're the other side of the piece of paper right here, we're over here by Jupiter, okay? And this was behind, okay? These are all behinds, okay? The 28th, and I do have the first, but see how they start blocking us out on the first? They only give us that side, okay? So, like, when we're sitting here at the latest images, you can see that that should be Jupiter in this shot, okay? And we also are basically going to put up here. That's more than likely... Now it could be Venus, but I'd really doubt it. This is the this is the inter flare that you get from it. Okay, that's not a planet there. Okay, that's that flare we get. We can see that flare, not the meatball like it was real tight. We can see that way way off. Okay, and I can take and show you what these planets are real fast by on this current map. That basically that's why you see Jupiter so big and bright out there in the sky. Okay. To the east, and then if you look in, if you look to the west of the moon right now, it's Venus. Okay, so and the sun's over here, so it makes sense that the idea that the closest thing to the sun is Venus. Okay, and we pretty much know for a little while B is going to give us Venus and A is going to give us Mercury. So we pretty much know that that should be Venus, right there. Okay, so that's Venus. We plop in at a 400 percent. Or bring her down. You got Venus in them, but on the other side of the sun, you can see the super giant's material, folks. Because over here, we're going to have more than likely that should be Mars right there. Okay, but then we want to look at the magnetic line too, and we're looking at the shots. And since it's kind of dead on the bottom, we kind of want to look. I think at the top of this shot for the magnetic line, just like this here, and it's kind of hard to see. So the idea that this could be, honestly, when you're looking at a magnetic line, this could be Mars, or Mercury, I mean, I don't care about getting that mess up too, whether it's Mercury or Mars, it doesn't really matter right now at this point. But the idea that you can see, I'm pretty darn sure it's Mercury, and you can see the backside action of some of the material that's in the supergiants right there, okay? Because the sun is in the gap between both the shots, okay? And then up here, we can see what's around Venus. New planets that you can end up discovering. If you zoom in on this stuff here, you'll end up seeing the planets that are around here, here. And I really don't think that that's Venus right there, because Venus is putting off a big, but it could be Venus. One of these could be Venus, but Venus also, I think, is probably right here, out of that shot. Okay, Because there you see Venus, and the other one, see, they don't like that, because they get mad, because I don't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't pop us out. And I, the, you pretty much know that that's Venus and putting that plasma. And they don't like that the idea that I've proven them wrong. And they do not like electrical engineers. Believe me. Astronomers do not like electrical engineers. They just want to talk about their stars. Okay. Well, well it is pictures. Okay. we here got the scientific and technical of an So that's putting that solar flare out that you basically will see up here, and it's either that's either that there, that could either be Venus there, or I really do believe Venus is back here because you can see it getting thrown out. Okay, that plasmoid protection. So what the hell are these two stars? Okay, that damn close to Venus. That's what's interesting. You see, that's what they're getting pissed off about. That we're figuring that out. You see that little glitch in the screen, folks? I didn't do that. They don't like this shit. Okay, because that is, and that's some super giant material behind the sun. 
because you got right there that what you, if you get a sky chart, you'll be able to sort of look up a continent.